Okay, so now that we've learned the basics of the toolbars and the software and how to write on a blank sheet of paper, we're going to look at working with objects in our smart notebook. So everything you put on a smart notebook page is considered an object, whether it's text or um, a clip art or a hyperlink or anything that you paste in there is going to be an object. So I'm going to start just by writing um, my name real quickly. Oh, it's doing something really weird. So I write my name and I'm going to click on the eraser and I'm going to erase, oh, it did, like I said, it did something really weird. So that's the perfect example. So I can click on that and I get that little arrow and I'm going to delete it. It made a bunch of lines. I'm going to delete, delete. So I have my name. I'm going to go over here to my gallery. And I'm just going to type a search here, and I'm going to search for um, I'm going to search for a computer. Let me highlight that. Since I'm going to just search technology, since it's technology training. And so you can see there's other folders, there's pictures, and then there's notebook files and pages. When I look at the files and pages, these are actual pages I can use in their entirety. So I see. Um, it would be a full page and I could just drag it over, but I'm just going to look at the pictures and I don't see anything really exciting, but we'll go with another search term. <laughs> we'll search school, see if I can find some different stuff. So now I have backgrounds and themes that I can plug in there and you'll notice I have this really cool little um, handwriting paper. Since I taught kindergarten, I'll pull in this. So it's a nice little background. Oh, I did really good on writing my name there. Um, so that's a background. I can go to the notebook files and pages and you can see there's even some letters. So you could pull them up on the screen and have students write. Uh, pictures, so I'm just going to scroll down and I have lots of letters has all those letters I could drag over. Um, I don't know how all of these things relate, but you know what? Chocolate is the perfect thing. So I'm just gonna drag that little piece of chocolate over. Looks kind of funny. Maybe I should find something else, but um, I can search Apple. And notice when I search Apple, I have six pictures. And again, I can drag this over. So now you can see I have the selector tool selected and everything on my board is an object. So when I click on something, I don't know why it's treating that like a pen, even though I have the selection tool picked, it, I get the crosshairs and I can actually move this around on the board. So I can position things um, where I want to. And then notice also when you select an object, you have that little drop down menu, that little arrow. And so you have several options. Clone is basically the copy and paste in one step. So when I say clone, it automatically makes a copy. If I come over here and I click that and I say copy, it's just copied it to my clipboard and I have to do the right click and paste for it to reappear. Um, we're pretty familiar with cut, copy, paste, delete, of course. Now, the infinite cloner is really fun. Um, I like to do this with coins. So let me pull up a coin, a picture of a coin. Um, maybe I let me search for quarter. Um, I can find a quarter specifically. Okay, I have 29 pictures of quarters. This will be interesting. Okay, so here's a quarter. So I'm going to drag it over onto my page. And then I'm going to select that infinite cloner. So when I select the infinite cloner, notice now when I select that tool, it's got that little 
um, it's almost got like the little infinity sign there. So basically what I can do when I click on this and drag, it automatically makes a copy of it. So this is particularly useful if in math, and it, it'll make as many copies as you want it to. Now the copies are individual copies that I can go in and I can delete if I want to. So the infinite tool, the infinite cloner is fun for math manipulatives. Now if I move my name up here and I don't want my students to move it around for whatever activity, I have the option to notice one when it's text, I can have it recognize and turn it into um, print. So now it's print. Um, I can check the spelling, but I can lock this. And so when I lock it in place, that means it won't move. So sometimes when you create an activity, you don't want objects to move um, because everything on the board moves except for the background and any objects that you lock. To unlock it, you just click that little lock and then you can unlock it. Um, I can also link it to a, to a specific tool if I wanted to. Um, other things that you can do, you can group objects if you have more than one, you can flip them, you can order them, but then you can add a link. So here I could link this to the Cedar Hill website. And so now notice there's a little globe icon and when I click on that, it's going to open up the Cedar Hill ISD website. So you can link within your um, presentation or on the objects, that's so nice. You can add sound and then you can see the properties of that object. So that's working with objects. My favorite is the infinite cloner.